calificas para ser legal? ¿Quieres saber? Solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. People don't look at is what are the, what can disqualify somebody. So yes, I'm 18. Yes, I've been here for, for for over five years. Yes, I've paid my taxes, but I've been convicted of murder. Well, whether here or in in your prior country, if you were convicted of murder, you are never becoming a United States citizen. The likelihood is, is when they catch up to that fact, you will likely lose your green card and be placed in your removal hearings. There are certain crimes. There are certain actions that automatically make you a, a, a not a moral person. Now, let me give you a tip. If you were ever arrested at any time, you have to be forthright and honest with immigration. The N-400, Section 10, asks about 15 specific questions. Some of them are, have you ever been convicted of a crime? That's an easy one. Have you ever been arrested of a crime or offense? They don't really define what a crime or offense is. But what they're getting at is, if you've ever been arrested, at any point, you have to tell them. It doesn't matter if you were a minor juvenile. It doesn't matter if it was expunged. Immigration has access to everything. If you go for a job interview and you had a prior arrest, you had it expunged, and they ask you, have you ever been convicted of a crime? You can say, no, it's gone. For your employer does would not have access to that. Immigration does. And if you say no, you didn't, that's fraud. That's misrepresentation. And that will be a denial of your application and potentially it has an effect to your current green card. So if you were arrested, you will have to provide a copy of the certified disposition of the result. All that means is you contact the court, they put they make you pay a fee, and they put a seal on a document saying what the result was. You should provide a copy of the arrest report, any sentencing that was provided, and anything you feel would be helpful to explain what happened and what the result were. Traffic matters generally do not qualify or do not cause you to be a bad or a, or a not good moral character. Specifically, if it's a fine over $500 is what they set up the criteria, or if it involves alcohol or drugs. That means driving or under the influence. So usually one DWI or DUI does not automatically disqualify you, but immigration is federal law. A DWI is state law. And New Jersey does not quantify a DUI, driving while intoxicated or driving under the influence, as a crime. In other states, you have a jury trial, you can go to jail for a very long period of time. New Jersey doesn't address it that way, but immigration looks at it from its own perspective. It has nothing to do with, with how New Jersey quantifies it or not. So you need to review your criminal background, you need to review your driver's abstract, and if you've ever been arrested, you need to speak to an attorney before you apply. You could, you could have a driving abstract for 20 years, and all your, only your violations were driving without a license, and driving with a suspended license, or, or careless, or reckless. Well, at some point, that rises to the level of good moral character. Think about it as a club. Immigration is deciding who are they going to invite in the club. Just because you were allowed into the initial section as a resident does not mean you're going to be considered a VIP. Immigration looks at citizenship as VIP, and they can decide, is this somebody that I want to allow me to allow? So if there are qualities that they feel are uh, uh, unwarranted, or that they feel are disagreeable, like not paying taxes, uh, not following the law, whether criminal violations or otherwise, they can quite easily say, I'm sorry, keep your green card. You are allowed to stay here, you can work, you have no issue, but we're not going to automatically give you your citizenship. The tip here is, immigration presumes your law. They presume every application is fraudulent. So you might think, well, that's an innocent mistake. I didn't understand the difference between a crime and offense. I honestly thought that 
I didn't qualify because it was a sponge. Immigration does not look at it from that perspective. USCIS, the Department of Homeland Security, ICE, they see it as somebody that intentionally kept something from them. They consider it an intentional misrepresentation. And if they feel it rises to that level, not only will they deny the application, they will put you in proceedings to terminate the green card. I'm not standing here to try to scare you. I'm trying to tell you what I see happens. One has to be careful in what they see, in how they apply, and what they do. If one follows the instructions, and if one is diligent, not everyone needs an attorney to file an N-400 or to file for citizenship. But there are certain circumstances, and I'll get into it, where one should at least consult and say, look, I'm concerned about this. And an attorney will tell you, do you have a reason to be concerned or not? Other examples of lack of get of good law character, like the habitual drunkenness, illegal gambling, prostitution, polygamy, which means marriage to more than one person at a time. Now, these are questions that are taken directly from the N-400. They ask you, are you have you made your living from illegal gambling? Are you a habitual drunk? If you say no, they have evidence to say that you have. For example, 10 DWI convictions, or even three or four, may lead them to consider you might be an habitual drunk. It's discretionary. So, if I had somebody that was applying with multiple DWIs, I would look to see, well, what seminars have they taken on alcohol? When were these violations taken? Were they last month, or was it 10 years ago? What's happened recently? How does one show that this person has been rehabilitated? That was a part of their past, it's not who they are today. They shouldn't be jeopardized for, for the entire life for the actions that they did when they were younger. Every case is different. Now, part of the application process is what's called biometrics. And that's just a, a technical way for them to say fingerprinting. After you apply, they send you a notice, and they ask you to present yourself with, ident with identification to present your fingerprints. They review the application, they review the supporting documents, and they review the information that the fingerprinting has. So if somebody had something expunged or was arrested, they have access to it after the fingerprints. Increasingly with technology with this today, they have more and more information, whether it's states, whether it's IRS taxes, whether it's travel in and out of the United States. Do not take the chance, be honest, be as honest as you can. Polygamy, where I see polygamy happening is someone got married, thought they got divorced, uh, they, they thought the spouse did in a foreign country. And then they, lay, they later remarry to a United States citizen who then files on their behalf. And then they realize, oops, that prior marriage was not, the divorce was not proper. That invalidates the present marriage. So if there's a pending application for a green card, that will get denied until such a time as the divorce is finalized and they get married in a legal fashion. And the last one is, is terrorist acts. Now, Calificas para ser legal, quieres saber, solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. 305-566-1111.